Have you ever written a complex SQL query and thought, surely there's a cleaner way to do this? Well, if you're using PostgreSQL, there probably is. In this video, I'll show you five built-in features in Postgres that will make it easier to work with your database without any new tools or extensions. These are features that many developers don't even know exist. If you want a quick reference guide on advanced Postgres features, check out my free PDF guide using the link in the description. Let's get started. Let's say you're trying to count how many orders have been cancelled. You might write something like this, where you have a count function to find the number of cancelled orders. This code works, but there's a better way. Postgres gives us the filter clause. Here is the same query using filter. It's much easier to read. No case, no handling for nulls, just a clean, direct way to add conditions to your aggregate functions. It can also improve your query if you have multiple case statements that look at similar criteria. For example, if you also wanted to count completed orders, you can update your query to add another function. You can also use this with sum, average, max, and min. If you've ever written complex aggregate queries with lots of conditions, this technique is very handy. Have you ever needed to get just one row per group? For example, the most recent order per customer. In most databases, you'd need a window function or a subquery. But Postgres gives you the distinct on keyword. Here is what it looks like. This gives you the latest order for each customer. It's a specific use case, but it can be pretty handy and easier than the alternatives. The order by clause controls which row you keep. The distinct on keyword is simple, fast, and pretty handy for reporting style queries. Let's say you insert a new row and want the ID back. You might want this if you want to update another row with the ID as a foreign key. In other databases, you'd have to write two queries. The first query inserts the row, and then another query is used to find the row you just inserted. In Postgres, you can do this in one step using returning. You add the returning keyword at the end of your insert statement like this. You can run this, and it returns the ID value that was just inserted. You can use the returning keyword with insert, update, or delete. This is incredibly useful when building apps or scripts and when debugging data changes. You don't need a separate select just to confirm what happened to your data. If you're enjoying these tips and you want to go from writing basic SQL to writing clean professional SQL, you'll love my PostgreSQL Mastery course. It's full of real-world examples like these and it'll help you write better SQL. Check the link in the description to learn more. One of the best things about Postgres is the data types. Most databases give you int, varchar, and date, and a couple of variations. Postgres goes even further. Here are a few that are worth knowing. First, there's a type called UUID. This can be used for unique identifiers across systems and is a good choice for primary keys. Another type is called INET, which can be used for storing IP addresses and networks. There's a type called MONEY, which is helpful for storing currency values with formatting. Using the right data types makes your data more accurate and your queries easier to write. If you're working with IPs or need globally unique IDs, this can save you a lot of time and bugs. This one may not apply to all of you, but it's really powerful. In most databases, DDL commands like create table or alter table can't be rolled back. Once you run them, they're permanent. This is because they have a commit included in the statement. But Postgres treats DDL statements like this the same as DML statements like insert. This means you can wrap it in a transaction. For example, we can begin a transaction and then write a create table statement. After that, we can run a rollback command. The rollback command undoes the table creation. This means you can test changes safely. You can script schema changes with more confidence. You don't have to worry about breaking your database if something goes wrong halfway through deployment. Now, with a real deployment script, you probably won't have a rollback command right after the create table, but you would have one if there was an error that was found. The rollback command would undo the data changes and table creation. These five Postgres features are helpful for various use cases with your Postgres database. Check out the link in the description for my PDF quick reference guide for advanced Postgres features. There are three techniques that are similar in SQL but have different uses. 
Watch this video next to learn what a CTE, subquery, and view are, and when you should use each technique in your query. Thanks for watching.